Welcome back to the Immaculata Church Project here in St. Mary's, Kansas. I'm here today with Chris Koenig, our project superintendent. Today we're going to give you an update on the interior and kind of recap on the exterior. In our last video, we talked about the importance of wrapping up the exterior, drawing the building in, and getting our temporary heat in. We're going to turn it over to Chris and we're going to talk about where we're at on that. So, as Bill mentioned, right, we, we've been doing this transition over the last month of trying to get to where we focus on the inside. We are enclosed, we are making our own heat. Our priorities and our critical path are on the inside. Their outside hasn't stopped. Uh, you can see we've still got masons in the background, uh, but we, we're, we're not critical path there. On warm days, we chase masonry outside of tents. On cold days, we, we work inside of tents. Since that last uh, video, we did go ahead and get in all of the south paving. Um, we've still got some paving that if we get a few uh, sunny days and some warm weather, we'll go ahead and pick off on. But the exterior work is, is when the weather allows and how we can set it up logistically to bounce back and forth. Now we're focusing on the inside of the building. And so far with the exterior, we are still on schedule? Uh, yes, we are. We'll still be done in time next year. Good. Well, let's go on inside and talk about strategy going forward. So in our last video, we touched on this interior scaffolding, and at the time it was only about 60% set up. Now it is completely set up. Uh, the scaffolding is 280 feet long. It's 54 feet in this nave area and goes up to 80 feet in the cupola. Uh, with, let's go up and show them what we're putting this scaffolding in for. All right, so now we're up at that 54 foot level. We basically have this entire space is, is platforms. We're what, about eight feet from the ceiling, Chris? Uh, yeah, we are. We're about eight feet from the ceiling. We've got beams that come down about two foot. So that, that gives us really the purpose of the whole, uh, whole interior scaffold, right? A building that's this tall on the inside, you get outside of anything you can do for lifts. So it all has to be something you can get a person to reach off of this scaffold. So our main ceiling elevations are all gonna be able to be done off of this, at least through the nave and the transepts and into the sanctuary. But if you peer down the hole in here, you can also see that we have to have working platforms all the way down the perimeter. This uh, scaffold system really has to get a person's hands to the finished space all the way around. Well, all right, let's go up into the cupola on that deck and let's talk about our strategy of, of what's gonna happen here over the next 12 months. Sounds good. All right, so now we're up in the cupola uh, at the 80 foot elevation on the scaffolding. This is the highest point of the scaffolding. Uh, you can see the windows on the cupola are installed, the, the, the 12 windows in the 12 sides. Chris, take it from here. What, where are we at up here with uh, progress? So we've started on the framing in and around it. So before we had just that main structural steel and our decking and our roofing. But if you look up the ceiling, you can start to see what, what's going to hold the jip board and make the final shapes, right? They've started to build out uh, the wedges that make up the dodecagon of the ceiling of the cupola. Um, and we, we've got our fur outs around the outside of the wall, right? The exterior wall is all structural framing. And then we get build back out that allows some of the architecture to get built. And we're, we're pausing right here on the framing. The next thing is we've got to start getting the MEP to start working into it. So if you look around, you can see that one of the main fire sprinkler loops around this cupola are in, and they'll have to run branch lines coming off of this that'll go up into the cupola. And uh, that's kind of where the precision starts to take off, right? We'll have areas of, of that fire sprinkler system that have to coordinate very specifically with the, uh, the liturgical painting that'll be coming later this year. So some of these, some of these sprinkler heads will match up specifically with the location of a star, and, and they've already began painting some of these areas. One of the areas we haven't talked about much was the basement, so let's go down there and take a look. Um, that's what? It's about 100 feet below where we're standing. Yep, it is. So on our way down to the basement, we popped out on the north transept here. Uh, here we are with Oscar's crew. Chris, can you let us know what's going on out here? Yeah, so this is our north transept entry, as Bill said. There is a lot of detailed, intricate work that goes into all of our entryways. Um, the west facade, I mean, by far the most, but 
uh, both transepts have a detailed entry, both narthex have a detailed entry, and even the lower east side has one. It's great tent work, right? That we're not on the exterior trying to focus on big scale stuff, but here is slow, ideal tent things. It lives in here, we can still heat off the building, and theirs is just a ton of effort and time that goes into each one of these entryways that Oscar's just now starting into. It looks great. Keep up the good work, Oscar. Thank you. So this space here is really going to be our parish life. Uh, we have, on our campus now, we have three entities. We have a college, an academy, and a parish. We have over 4,000 souls to come to Mass every Sunday. We have a 1,500 seat church. What we also wanted to do is, is bring the entire parish life up here. Catechism spaces, a parish hall, Sacred Heart League kitchen. The sisters have a, a sodality room. This is that space. We're right now standing in that parish hall. Uh, looks like a lot going on down here. There's a lot of mechanical things. Chris, kind of walk us through you know, what we're looking at here. So, you can see a lot's happened since uh, I think any photos that have been taken into the basement space. We've got a lot of framing done in a lot of the MEP. Ironically, the framing in this area is, is really not critical path. We do use this space uh, largely as a float area. So, if we run into an obstruction or, or, or there's too many people in the spot or weather, right, they've been able to bounce down here and, and do that as far as the framing goes. But areas that aren't blocked off waiting for air handling units, uh, right, we've got most of that in. We've got most of our coffer beams in. A good portion of the, of the framing is in down here. The critical path down here, while it may not be the, the jip board and the finishes, though are our systems. We've been working for the last several months trying to get our systems up and running. While we're bringing our finishes down, we are trying to take our, our systems, our, our water, our air, everything else, and making it go up to the top to sort of match up with it. So as you can see, we've got a couple of our air handling units in. Uh, this is air handling unit one and two. These ones are going to be completely fully functional. While, while everyone is, is focusing so much on trying to get things looking like a finished wall, we can't do anything with those walls if we don't get some of these systems up and operational. So over the next two months or so, getting that completely ducted in, hooked up to the chillers, which is in Topeka and ready to be landed and piped in and tied to our boilers so that we can begin moving airflow so we can control our humidity and our, our final spaces. But uh, Bill, as you mentioned at the very beginning, we. We do have our temporary heat now, and, and we've been using actually the building systems themselves in order to heat the building. We supplement it with some uh, natural gas heaters, but a large portion of our heating is actually through the hydronic floor system, which was a part of the initial design. It's been a fantastic way to sort of accommodate what we need to while we're doing construction with an end, end part of the system. So, Three boilers, expansion tanks, hot water heaters, main pumps for the building, up there, the little red pumps that uh, feed into the hydronic system themselves. So a lot of what people don't think about being critical path, this portion of it is. So is there anything in this project that concerns you going forward in the next 12 months? Uh, definitely, uh, we do look at the supply chain issues that a lot of the world is seeing right now, and I'm sure everybody's heard about. They, they have had some impacts on us now, and, and uh, we're hoping to mitigate anything they've got in the future. So. Uh, yeah, the deliveries getting in on time, materials coming in, uh, labor shortages, the, uh, the uniqueness of what the world is now with the pandemic and this current economy is, is just a little different than the, the normal environment. Uh, you've worked on a lot of construction projects. You're a, you're a, you're a well-respected superintendent in this area. How is this project different than some of the projects you've worked on in the past? Well, so it doesn't take but a few minutes of flipping through the prints to see that this is, is a, just a completely unique job. I mean, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a part of something of, of this scale and size and, and quality. Uh, but all that aside, uh, it's unique because of, of the people here as well. Uh, we went through the holidays and uh, the church brought out a small care package for every employee on, on the job. This is a big job, that's, that's special, that's unique. Uh, every Wednesday, the, uh, uh, the church comes out and sets up lunch and feeds every employee on the, on the job. Um, just going down town and, and people know who we are and what we're doing, uh, uh, the friendliness is over the top. Th this project is special from beginning to end. Oh, thank you, Chris. 
We ask you to continue to pray for this project, especially like Chris mentioned with the supply chain issues and the, the uncertainties there. Um, if you would like any further information, you can visit our website at anewimmaculata.org.